Hey, Lucky Cyclist here. So I finally upgraded my Le Mans Etap road bike. I've made a video about that bike in the past, my history with it, as well as a little bit about the Le Mans brand. I'll put a link to that somewhere around here. But today I wanna to focus and talk through the upgrades with you. So the story with this build is that my neighbor was looking for a new bike and he stumbled across an estate sale in the area. It was the estate sale of a guy who was affectionately known as Campy Bob. And as you can guess, Campy Bob had a whole host of Campagnolo components. So my neighbor bought a bike from Campy Bob and then a whole bunch of other Campagnolo components with the idea of flipping those and helping offset the cost of the bike. One of the things that he picked up was a used Campagnolo Chorus 11 speed group set. And if you've been following along with me for the last few years, you'll know that I've become kind of a Campagnolo fanboy. So when he told me he was looking to offload some of this stuff, I thought, you know what? I got the perfect bike for this. So I gave my neighbor 200 bucks and I picked up this Campagnolo Chorus 11 speed group set. So $200 is a phenomenal value, but it's not without a few caveats. So Let's take a look at the components and I'll kind of talk through some of the issues that I found. So the group set that I bought was not a complete group set, uh, but it did include uh, front and rear derailleurs, uh, the crank set, a cassette, uh, as well as the shifters. Did not include a bottom bracket. The Le Mans had a square taper bottom bracket. So I had to pick up some of these ultra torque uh, bottom bracket cups in order for the, to fit the crank set on here. And then I ended up picking up some uh, rim brakes, some Campagnolo Chorus rim brakes, brand new online. They really weren't that much money because nobody wants rim brakes anymore. So the most obvious issue with this group set is that it is super hard man gearing. So uh, the chain rings are 5339, and then it's a short cage derailleur in the back. So I think it's limited to a 29 tooth cog. Although I'm pretty sure you could probably easily fit a, a 30 on there. But the cassette that it came with is an 1125. So I would never run this sort of gearing on a road bike normally. But I figure, I don't know, I got compact cranks on all the other bikes. It might be kind of fun to have one bike that has ridiculous old school gearing on it. Plus, my main use of this bike going forward is that I'm going to use it as my indoor trainer bike. So I'm going to put it on the Wahoo Kicker Core. Right now, I have a vintage steel bike on there that's got an awesome paint job. So I don't really want to sweat and scuzz up that bike any more than I already have. And the chain is, I believe, a Campagnolo Centaur chain, which I just had like kind of laying around. So the shifters are kind of your standard Campagnolo shifters. Thumb shifter there, paddle shifter, brakes. The hoods were kind of cracked a little bit here around the thumb shifters. So bought some new covers for the shifters online. Uh, those were, were relatively inexpensive. So I did have a little bit of trouble with the right shifter and I was getting some really wonky shifting on uh, one of my first rides that I did with this bike. So I had Dirty River Bicycle Works sort of take the shifter apart and, and rebuild it. And it's definitely working better now. Bar tape is whatever random, I think, SRAM bar tape that was lying around the shop. And we picked up these cool little yellow Campagnolo bar ends because, yeah, they're cool. So one of the kind of unexpected results of this build project was that I learned a lot about handlebar sizing. So I had a old set of Cannondale bars on this bike previously. And when I put them back on here, they looked huge. And so then I started kind of looking around at the other handlebars that I have on other bikes and measuring them. And I really like the bars that I have on my Colnago. And they are a set of uh, Detta Elementi 0100 bars. And the thing that I learned from this process is that Detta measures their handlebars end to end, whereas most other companies measure it center to center. So the 42 centimeter bar that I ordered for the Colnago, it's more like a 40 centimeter bar. So what I learned from this build is that I actually like 40 centimeter bar. I went ahead and ordered a new handlebar for this bike. I got the same one that I put on the Coldago, but a couple of tiers down. I think this is the zero two. So it weighs a little bit more, but it's basically the same like rapid hand movement, RHM type bar that's on the Colnago. 
So we talked through the drivetrain, but we did not talk through the fact that previously this bike was set up eight speed, and now we are trying to set it up 11 speed. So decided to take this opportunity to upgrade the wheels. The braking service on the front, front wheel was, I don't know, was kind of cooked. And so it was just a good time to upgrade. Uh, picked up these uh, Fulcrum Racing 5 C17 wheels. So aluminum wheel, pretty lightweight, basically designed as kind of like a training wheel, like a winter wheel, so super good value. And we ended up putting a Campagnolo splined hub on there because pretty much at this point, all my road bikes are Campagnolo. And so I'd rather just kind of keep everything consistent and interchangeable. In terms of tire selection, I had some Pirelli P0 race TLRs laying around. We have a 700 by 26 on the rear and a 700 C by 28 millimeter on the front. The reason for the mismatched tires, well, that's just what I had laying around and I was just trying to kind of keep costs down to the extent possible. Had some look pedals, the Kio 2 Max Carbons that I had originally put on the Colnago before I took those off to put on some power pedals. So seemed like a good time to, to use those. Other than flipping the stem just to make it a little bit more aggressive, basically kind of kept everything else on this bike the same as it was previously set up with one huge notable exception is that I tried to paint this bike. Frame and the fork both were looking a little bit worn. I mean, just, you know, 16 plus years of abuse. And I kind of wanted to try to cover that up and just make this bike look a little bit brusher. Bought some spray bike, which I had a lot of success with, with one of my kids bikes. But I would say that spray biking small portions of a child's bike is a lot different than painting an entire frame and fork. So spray bike basically only sells matte colors. So we did the fork in a matte black, which I think looks pretty cool and turned out pretty well. And then I also bought some matte silver, which as my wife, Reminded me later, matte silver is basically just gray. So what I should have done is also bought a glossy finish. And after I finished painting this, put the gloss on over it. And I think that probably would have looked a lot better, but honestly, I don't know. It was pretty time consuming process to, to tape everything up, to, to spray bike it. And I just, I don't know, was getting kind of lazy. It's good from afar, but it's far from good but I don't know, it's definitely at least covered up some of the most obvious blemishes that were on the bike and it's fine, whatever, it'll work. So that's the revamped Le Mans Tap. Like I said, probably mostly gonna use this indoors on the Wahoo Kicker Core, but toying with the idea of maybe trying to race this thing in a crit or something next year, uh, we'll see. Drop a comment down below, let me know what you think about the build and I will see you in the next video.